But then a rattling sound made Sarah turn back around. The robot was shaking all over, like it was either going to rev up or break down entirely. Then it went still. Sarah resigned herself once more to the idea that the robot wasn't going to do anything, until it did. The robot's waist pivoted, making its upper body move. It slowly raised its arms and then put them down. Its head turned to face Sarah, seeming to look at her with its big green eyes. Hello, friend, it said, in a slightly metallic sounding version of a young girl's voice. My name is Eleanor. Sarah knew the thing couldn't be talking to her personally, but it felt like it was. Hi, she whispered, feeling a little silly for entering into a conversation with an inanimate object. I'm Sarah. Nice to meet you, Sarah, the girl robot said. Whoa, how had it said her name back to her? It must have some pretty sophisticated built-in computer or something, Sarah thought. It was the kind of thing her brother might know about. He was in college, majoring in computer science. The robot took a few surprisingly smooth steps towards Sarah. Thank you for rescuing me and cleaning me up, Sarah, Eleanor the robot said. I feel as good as new. She gave a pretty, feminine twirl, her short skirt billowing. Sarah's mouth was hanging open. Was this thing capable of actual conversation, of actual thought? Um, you're welcome, she said. Now, Eleanor said, placing her cold, hard, hard little hand on Sarah's cheek. You tell me what I can do for you, Sarah. Sarah stared at the robot's blankly pretty face. What do you mean? You did something nice for me. Now I must do something nice for you. Eleanor cocked her head like an adorable puppy. What do you want, Sarah? I want to make your wishes come true. Um, nothing really, Sarah said. It wasn't the truth, but really, how could this robot make her wishes come true? Everybody wants something, Eleanor said, brushing Sarah's hair away from her face. What do you want, Sarah? Sarah took a deep breath. She looked at the images of models and actresses and pop stars on her walls. She might as well say it. Eleanor was a robot. She wouldn't judge her. I want... She whispered, feeling embarrassed. I want to be beautiful. Eleanor clapped her hands. To be beautiful! What a wonderful wish! But it is a large wish, Sarah, and I am petite. Give me 24 hours and I will have a plan to start making this wish come true. Okay, sure, Sarah said, but she didn't believe for one minute that this robot had the ability to transform her looks. She couldn't even quite believe that she was having a real conversation with it. When Sarah woke up the next morning, Eleanor was standing in the corner as still and lifeless as the other decorative objects in Sarah's room, no more alive than the stuffed Freddy Fazbear she'd had on her bed since she, since, she, eh, since she was six. Maybe the conversation with Eleanor had just been a particularly vivid dream. That afternoon when Sarah got home from school, Eleanor pivoted her waist, raised and lowered her arms, and moved smoothly over to Sarah. I made you something, Sarah, she said. Eleanor put her hands behind her back and produced a necklace. It was a chunky silver chain with a large cartoonish silver heart pendant dangling from it. It was unusual. Pretty. You made this for me, Sarah said. I did, Eleanor said. I want you to make me a promise. I want you to put this necklace on and never ever take it off. Do you promise you'll always keep it on? Always? I promise, Sarah said. Thank you for making it for me. It's beautiful. And you will be beautiful too, Eleanor said. Since your wish is so big, Sarah, I can only grant it a little at a time. But if you wear this necklace and keep it on, each morning when you wake up, you'll be a little more beautiful than the day before. Eleanor held out the necklace and Sarah took it. Okay, thanks. Sarah said, not believing Eleanor for a minute. But she put on the necklace anyway because it was pretty. It looks good on you, Eleanor said. Now for the necklace to work, you have to let me sing you to sleep. Oh no, I'm going to have to sing here. <laughs> like, now? Sarah asked. Eleanor nodded. It's, it's early though, Mum isn't even home from work yet. For the necklace to work, 
You have to let me sing you to sleep. Eleanor repeated. Well, I guess I could take a little nap, Sarah said, not entirely sure that she wasn't already asleep and dreaming. Get into bed, Eleanor said, moving in her smooth stroll to the side of Sarah's bed. Even though she was a robot, everything about Eleanor was so feminine and lovely. Sarah pulled back the covers and got into bed. Eleanor sat at the edge of the bed and stroked Sarah's hair with her cold little hand. She sang. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, my sweet Sarah. <laughs> when you wake, when you wake, all your dreams will come true. There you go. That was my rendition of Eleanor's song. <laughs> oh, God. Before Eleanor sang the last note, Sarah was asleep. Sarah was usually groggy and grumpy in the morning, but this morning she woke up feeling great. Eleanor, she noticed, was standing still in the corner of the room in her inanimate object pose. Somehow Eleanor being there made Sarah feel safe, as if Eleanor was standing guard. Maybe Eleanor was just an inanimate object, Sarah thought as she sat up in bed. But then she reached up and felt the silver heart pendant hanging just below her throat. If the necklace was real, the talk she had with Eleanor must be real too. As she moved her hand away from the necklace, she noticed something else. Her arm, both her arms actually. They were slimmer and more toned somehow. And their skin, which was usually shallow, or sorry, sallow, was healthy and glowing. The dry patches of skin she was prone to have disappeared. And both arms were smooth and and soft to the touch. Even her usually chapped elbows were as soft as kitten's noses. And her fingers. As she touched her arms with them, they felt different too. She stretched out her hands to inspect them. Her once stubby fingers were long, elegant and ta tapered. Her formerly short, nubby nails were now longer than her fingertips and shaped in perfect ovals. Amazingly, they were also painted a gorgeous, soft pink, each nail like a perfect rose petal. Sarah ran to the mirror to give herself a full inspection. Same mix and match face, nose and body, but now with a perfect pair of arms and hands. She thought of Eleanor's words from last night. Each morning you'll wake up. Uh, each morning you wake up, you'll be a little more beautiful than the day before. Sarah was definitely a little more beautiful. Was this the way it was going to work? That every morning, a different part of her would be transformed? She darted to the corner where Eleanor was standing. I love my new arms and hands. Thank you, she said to the unmoving robot. So like, am, am, am I going to wake up every morning to one new part until I'm totally transformed? Eleanor didn't move. Her face kept the same painted on expression. Well, maybe I'll just have to wait and see, huh? Sarah said. Thanks again. She stood on tiptoe, kissed the robot on its cold, hard cheek, and then hurried to the kitchen for breakfast. Her mom was sitting at the table with a cup of coffee and half a grapefruit. Wow, I didn't even have to yell at you to get out of bed this morning, mom said. What's going on? Sarah shrugged. I don't know, I just woke up feeling good. I slept well, I guess. She poured some cornflakes in a bowl and drenched them with milk. Well, you were already passed out when I got home. I thought about waking you for dinner, but you were out like a light, Mum said. She watched as Sarah shoveled in cereal. And you're eating real food too. Would you like the other half of this grapefruit? Sure, thanks, Sarah said. As she reached for the grapefruit, her mum grabbed her hand. Hey, when did you let your nails grow out? This is this reminds me of like um the big bad wolf from um Red Riding Hood. <laughs> it's like Gra granny your ears are so big granny your your nose is is very long like it's not granny it's a big bad wolf sarah knew she couldn't say last night so she said over the past couple of weeks i guess well they look fantastic mum said giving her hand a squeeze before she let it go healthy too have you been taking those vitamins i brought you sarah hadn't been but said yes anyway good her mum said, smiling. It's definitely paying off. After breakfast, Sarah selected a pink shirt that complemented her nail colour and took some extra time with her hair and makeup. At school, she felt a little less invisible. While she was in the restroom washing her hands, Gillian, one of the beautifuls, came in. She checked her perfect face and hair in the mirror. 
then glanced down at Sarah's hands. Ooh, I love that polish, she said. Sarah was so, <laughs> Sarah was so shocked she could barely manage to say thanks. Gillian flounced out of the restroom, no doubt to join her popular friends. But she had seen Sarah. She had noticed Sarah. And she had liked at least one thing about her. Sarah smiled to herself for the rest of the day. Eleanor was mostly nocturnal. When the last of the winter daylight started to fade, she pivoted her waist, moved her arms up and down, and sprang to life. Hello, Sarah, she said in her tiny, or sorry, tinny little voice. Are you a little more beautiful today than you were yesterday, just like I promised? Yes, Sarah said. She couldn't remember ever feeling so grateful. Thank you. Eleanor nodded her head. Good. And are you a little happier today than you were yesterday? I am, said Sarah. Eleanor clapped her little hands. Good, that's what I want, to grant your wishes and make you happy. Sarah still couldn't quite believe this was all happening. It's really nice of you. But why? I told you why. You saved me, Sarah. You pulled me out of the trash heap, cleaned me up, and brought me back to life. And so now I want to grant you wishes, just like a fairy godmother. Would you like that? Her voice, white metallic, also, oh sorry, well metallic, also sounded kind. Yeah, Sarah said. Who wouldn't like a fairy godmother? Good, Eleanor said. Then never ever take off that necklace and let me sing you to sleep. When you wake up, you'll be a little more beautiful than you are today. Sarah hesitated. She knew her mom had thought it was weird when she came home yesterday evening and found Sarah already asleep. If Sarah fell asleep early every night, her mom would worry that she was sick or something. Plus, there was the homework issue. If she stopped doing her homework, that too would arouse suspicion, both at home and at school. I'll let you sing me to sleep, Sarah said. But could it be in a few hours? I need to eat dinner with my mum and then do my homework. If you must, Eleanor said, sounding a little disappointed. But it is necessary that you let me put you to sleep as early as possible. It's important that you get your beauty rest. After a spaghetti dinner and an hour and a half of math and English, Sarah took a quick shower, brushed her teeth, and put on her nightgown. Then she approached Eleanor, who was standing still in her corner. I'm ready, Sarah said. Then get in bed like a good girl, Eleanor said. Sarah climbed under the covers, and Eleanor came to the bed with her rolling gait. She sat on the edge of the bed and reached out to touch Sarah's heart-shaped pendant. Remember to keep it on, and never ever take it off, Eleanor said. I'll remember, Sarah said. Eleanor, sh uh, uh, Eleanor stroked sh Sarah's hair. I'm finding it hard to pronounce these S's when they, when they create like sibilants and stuff. Eleanor stroked Sarah's hair with her cold little hand and sang her lullaby. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, my sweet Sarah. When you wake, when you wake, all your dreams will come true. There you go. That was the perfect version. <laughs> That was uh, optimized, remastered, if you will, remastered. Once again, Sarah fell asleep before she knew what hit her. She woke feeling refreshed, and when she stood up, she seemed to stand a little straighter, a little prouder, a little taller. She ran to the mirror and pulled up her nightgown to expose her legs. They were magnificent. She was no longer stubby Mrs. Mixon match with legless feet stuck onto her dumpy body. I don't think being taller in a, um, I mean, obviously it's personal preference, but I, I think, um, shorter, shorter girls are, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to finish that sentence. <laughs> I don't know what, uh, I, I think, I don't know. I, I don't think. The fact that she's taller is like a better thing, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I didn't mean it in any weird way. I I'm, I need to continue and just completely forget. Everybody just forget what I was talking about. <laughs> um, her legs were long and shapely, with toned calves and dainty ankles and model's legs. When she ran her hands over them, the skin was smooth and sleek. 
she looked down and noticed that the nails on her perfect adorable toes were polished the same rosy pink as her fingernails. Sarah usually wore jeans to school, the better to cover her stubby limbs, but today she was going to wear a dress. She ran to her closet and took out a lovely lavender dress her mum had bought her last spring. She hadn't liked the way it looked on her then, but now it showed off her long shapely arms and legs. She slipped on some ballet flats and admired her reflection in the mirror. She still didn't look exactly how she wanted to, that potato nose had to go for one thing, but she was definitely making progress. She put on the little bit of makeup she was allowed to wear, brushed her hair and went down to breakfast. Her mum was standing at the stove, stirring eggs in a pan. Look at you! You're a knockout! Mum looked her up and down, smiling. Is it picture day or something? No, Sarah said, sitting down at the table and pouring herself a glass of orange juice. I just felt like making an effort today. Is there somebody special you're making an effort for? I don't know what that was. <laughs> I was trying to do well, chick, well, well, but I just completely forgot about the chip bit. Uh, Mom asked in a teasing tone. Sarah's mind wandered for a moment to Mason Blair, but then the image turned into her bumping into him and covering him with salad. No, you just just for me, I guess. Mum smiled. Wow, that's really nice to hear. Hey, do you want some eggs? Sarah felt a sudden ravenous hunger. Sure, she said. Her mum dished up scrambled eggs and toast for each of them and then sat down. I don't know what it is, Mum said. But for the for the past couple of days, you've just seemed so much more mature and easy to talk to. She sipped her coffee and looked thoughtful. Maybe you've just been going through an awkward stage the last year and so, and you're starting to outgrow it. Sarah smiled. Yeah, I think that might be it. The awkward stage was my entire life before I met Eleanor, Sarah thought. Wow, her mind is really set on this Eleanor magic. Um, at school, Sarah saw Abby in the hall and felt a pang of missing her. The two of them had so much history together, going back to the days of finger paint and Play-Doh, but Abby was stubborn. If Sarah waited for Abby to apologise to her, it might never happen. She walked up to Abby and at her locker. Hey, Sarah said. Hey. Abby dug around in her locker and didn't make eye contact with her. Listen, Sarah said. I'm sorry I said those mean things to you the other day. Abby finally looked at her. Hey, they weren't wrong. I do still like cartoons and stickers and horses. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. Stickers and horses and cartoons are nice. And you're nice. And I'm sorry. Friends? She held her hand out, and Abby laughed and hugged her instead. When Abby pulled away from the hug, she looked Sarah up and down. Hey, have you gotten taller or something? There was no way she could explain it. No, I'm just working on having better posture. Well, you're definitely succeeding. Eleanor had put Sarah to sleep with her usual sweet song the night before. This morning, still lying in bed, she looked at her body to see if she could tell which parts had gotten an upgrade. To her surprise, the parts of her that had been soft and flabby were now tight and toned, and parts that had been flat and childish were now rounded and feminine. Sarah chose a fitted t-shirt and a denim miniskirt to wear to school, her pitiful, little, uh, her pitiful little training bra wouldn't hook anymore, so she made do with the sports bra she wore for gym class. It was a tight fit. At breakfast, she asked her mum, Can we maybe go shopping this weekend? Well, I get paid on Friday, so a little shopping wouldn't be out of the question, mum said, pouring herself more coffee. Anything in particular you're looking for? Sarah looked down at her chest, then grinned sheepishly. Oh! Her mum said, sounding startled. Well, those certainly snuck up on me. Of course we can buy you some bras that fit. She smiled and shook her head. Can't believe how fast you're growing up. Neither can I. It was true. Feels like it happens overnight, mum said. <laughs> because it does, Sarah thought. Wow. They had to sneak that little joke in there. <laughs> At school, Sarah could feel eyes on her. Boys' eyes. For the first time, she felt noticed. She felt seen. It was dizzying, exciting. In the hall on the way to English, a trio of boys, cute boys, looked at her, then looked at one another and whispered something, then laughed. But it wasn't a mean or mocking laugh. Wondering what they'd said, Sarah looked back at them and bumped right into, no, it couldn't be. Not again. Mason Blair. 
She felt the face flushing and braced herself for him to tell her to watch where she was going again. But instead he smiled. He had a really great, he, sorry, he had really great teeth, straight and white. We have to stop bumping into each other like this, he said. Actually, I think it's me bumping into you, Sarah said. At least I wasn't carrying a salad this time. Yeah, his smile was dazzling. That was really funny. Yeah, Sarah said. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I did that voice, but I'm sticking with it. Sarah said, though it struck her as strange that he said that the salad incident was funny now. When it had happened, it seemed annoying. Um, well, if you're going to keep running into me, I need to at least know your name. I can't just keep calling you salad girl. I'm Sarah. But you can call me Salad Girl if you want. Nice to really meet you, Sarah. I'm Mason. I know. She could have kicked herself so much for playing it cool. Okay, well, I'll see you around, Sarah the Salad Girl. He gave her one last flash of a smile. See you, Sarah said. She continued on her way to English, but all she could think about was that she just had a conversation, a real human conversation with Mason Blair. Sarah sat down next to Abby in class. Mason Blair just talked to me, Sarah whispered. Like, like, talked to me, talked to me. I'm not surprised, Abby whispered back. There's something about you lately. What do you mean? Abby crinkled her forehead the way she did when she was thinking hard. I don't know. I can't exactly put it into words. It's like you're glowing from the inside out. Sarah smiled. Yeah. That is what it's like. But really, it was the changes on the outside that were making her glow inside. In the evening, after Eleanor did her wake-up movement, Sarah threw her arms around her. It felt strange to hug something so hard and cold, and when Eleanor's arms encircled Sarah, she felt a flicker of what could have been fear. But she quickly pushed the feeling away. There was nothing to be afraid of. Eleanor was her friend. Eleanor, Sarah said, drawing back from the hug. I couldn't be happier with my new body. It's perfect. Thank you so much. I'm glad, Eleanor said, clo uh, cocking her head. All I want is for you to be happy, Sarah. Well, I'm loads happier than I was before I found you, Sarah said. Today it was like I could feel all these people seeing me. And they liked what they saw. This guy I've had a crush on for months even noticed me and talked to me. That's wonderful, Eleanor said. I'm glad I've been able to make your wishes come true, Sarah. A dark cloud suddenly passed over the brightness of Sarah's mood. Well, she said, not all of them. Wait, is this, who's, who's talking here? Uh, oh yeah. Well, she said, not all of them. She reached up and touched her potatoey nose. Really? Eleanor sounded surprised. What is it that you still wish, Sarah? Sarah took a deep breath. I love my new body, she said. I really do, but I'm kind of what some guys call pretty from afar, but far from pretty. Eleanor cocked her head again. Pretty from afar? I don't understand, Sarah. Well, you know, guys will say, she looks great from far away, but <laughs> don't get too close to her face. Oh, far from pretty, Eleanor said. I understand now. She laughed, a metallic tinkling. It is very amusing. It's not if someone's using it to describe you, Sarah said. I suppose it isn't, Eleanor said. She reached up and touched Sarah's cheek. Sarah, do you really want me to change all of this? Do you want a new face? I do, Sarah said. I want a, a tiny nose and full lips and high cheekbones. I want long dark eyelashes and nice eyebrows. I don't want to look like Mrs. Mixon match anymore. Eleanor laughed her tinkly little laugh again. I can do this for you, Sarah, but you have to understand it's a big change. You can look in the mirror and see longer legs or a curvier figure, and they just look like you've grown. Faster than expected, maybe, but still, growth is normal for a child. It is something you know will happen. All your life, though, you've looked in the mirror. You've seen your face and said, that's me. It is true that your face changes some as you grow, but it is still recognisable as you. To see a totally different face as your reflection can be quite a shock. It's a shock I want, Sarah said. 
I hate my face the way it is. Very well, Sarah, Eleanor said, looking into her eyes. As long as you're sure. <laughs> uh, after Sarah ate dinner with her mom and did her homework, she showered and got ready for Eleanor to put her to sleep one more time. But as she snuggled under the covers, a disturbing thought occurred to her. Eleanor? Yes, Sarah. She was already standing beside Sarah's bed. What will my mum think if I sit down to eat breakfast in the morning and I have a totally different face? Eleanor sat down on the bed. It is a good question, Sarah. But she won't notice. Not really. She may think you look especially rested or well. But she won't notice that your plain face has been replaced by a beautiful one. Mothers always think their children are beautiful. So when your mother looks at you, she has always seen great beauty. Oh, okay, Sarah said, feeling relaxed again. No wonder her mother didn't re understand her problems. She thought her daughter was already beautiful. I'm ready then. Eleanor touched Sarah's heart pendant. And do you remember? Nah, hang on, hang on. I'll read that again, but... Surely, <laughs> the logic in uh, in Sarah's brain right now is kind of all over the place. Like, oh, m my mother saw that I that I never had a problem in the first place because I've always been beautiful. Anyway, I'm gonna change my face. <laughs> it's like that's that's not the lesson you should be taking from that. It it should be that that your mother's always known you're beautiful because you've always been beautiful. Um. So yeah, that that's kind of <laughs> please. I can't believe Sarah's like, yeah, I can't believe, it's like Sarah's messed up here. <laughs> um, you remember that I always have to wear it and never take it off. Yes, I remember. Good. Eleanor stroked Sarah's hair and sang one more time, for God's sake. Do I have to do this again? Go to sleep, go to sleep. Go to sleep, my sweet sir. Yeah, I'm not doing the rest of that. 